about our time. Listen to this. Smith Wigglesworth was a man that could hardly go 30 minutes without praying. He can't go 30 minutes without praying. And he made a statement. He said, there's almost little or nothing to pray about. <laughs> there's almost little or nothing to pray about. But, but do you know what? He can hardly go 30 minutes without praying. And yet he said, there is almost little or nothing to pray about. And you see, he can hardly dress without a copy of a New Testament in his, in his pocket at least. So, almost every 30 minutes, Smithugu's word will read the Bible and he will pray. He can hardly go without, can hardly go beyond 30 minutes without praying. And Smithugu's word raised over 23 people, certified dead, back to life. Over 23 people, certified dead, he raised them back to life. He was a poor plumber who could hardly write his name. His wife taught him how to read and write. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of the times, Smith Ugusworth will come to a city unannounced. But the whole radio will be filled with the news of his meeting before he leaves that city. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Jude. Maybe we should look at that Jude first. Jude 1, 20 to 21. Jude said, but ye build up, building up yourselves. Building up yourselves. Now it depends on what you want to build up. It could even be your ministry that you want to build up. It could be your business. It could be your marriage. It could even be your wardrobe. Or it could be your garage. You know, some people are crazy about cars. It could be your garage you want to build up. So it didn't say building up yourselves on your most, it didn't say building up your faith. It said building up yourselves. Now, you use the language on your most holy faith. Now, what that literally means is this. When he said building up yourself on your most holy faith, what he's saying is that one of the instruments that you should use in building yourself should be your faith. Are you listening to me now? That is, if there is a car that you own today, let it be that you got that car by faith. If there's a shoe you are wearing today, let it be that you got that shoe by faith. A, a pastor was around during the week and we were trying to set up their live streaming. And uh, no, I can testify to it. The pastor has no cash, but he has faith. First of begin with, the camera that we buy for 150,000 and I got one for 50,000. We searched for cables everywhere for that camera, even in Abada, everywhere. He went to a, a shop somewhere, he, he, saw the, he saw the cable there. Not even on AliExpress. Hallelujah. As of yesterday, laptop that we bought for 180,000, he bought one for 70,000. In fact, he bought Koi 7, not even Koi 5, for 80,000, for 70,000. Hallelujah. So you see, his live streaming ministry is almost built or finished, but he built it by faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. He built it by faith. So one of the instruments you should use in building up yourself 
is your faith. Is your faith. Like I said here, faith is the currency of heaven, but prayer is the negotiation. It is in prayer that you negotiate. The currency that you spend is faith, but you negotiate in prayer. So you see, there's no transaction without negotiation. So you will never build your wardrobe, you will never build your house, you will never build your life, you will never build a marriage if you are not ready to transact business with your faith. So Jude said, building up yourselves or your most holy faith. That this faith is what you will use. Then he said, praying. He needs a pray. He said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Many people pray, but many people don't pray. They don't do praying. It is when house rent is due that they pray. But do you know what? Nothing will ever influence your life that does not happen in your life daily. Prayer will never, will never affect your life. I hope I'm maximum online. Prayer will never affect your life if you do it once in the blue moon. No, it will never. If prayer will bring effect in your life that will be evidence to the world, <laughs> prayer must happen daily in your life. Prayer cannot be something that you use as a peer tied to a car. That's how many Christians use prayer. Their prayer is all about God, you see, they say by tomorrow they are coming to remove my shoe if I do not pay the balance. Let me tell you. God is not interested in those kind of... God is not interested in people you, who use him as ATM machine. If you don't need money, ATM machine doesn't see you. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is looking for people who will spend time with him in fellowship. Who is spend time with him in fellowship? He said, by the time you push your need to God, God will say, Son, I know that you have it. You had that need. But you know what? Don't worry, it is already settled. You know, you know, I've already showed us also, which we still read. God is never part to delayed prayer. God is never part to it. And that was the state, one of the statements. Jude made in verse 21. He said, keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Listen to me. When we read Daniel chapter 9, Daniel said, while I was still praying, the angel came and said, this is the answer to your prayer. While I was still praying. Now, when we read Daniel chapter 10, Daniel was praying for 21 days. Just after chapter 9, now in chapter 10. The angel told him and said, the very first day that you started praying, I left heaven. He said, but the prince of Pasha held me bound. I was fighting with him until angel Gabriel came and joined me to fight him and then I have come to release your answer. So you see, listen to me. Every time there's a delay to your prayer, it has nothing to do with God. The very first second that you started praying, God has released the answer. God has released the answer. But you see, devil will always want to wear you away. Want to frustrate you. But you see, he'll be frustrated. That's why the Bible said, the God of this age, small g, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this age, small g. God is not the God of this age, but God is the God of the world. You see, the world world and the world age are two different things. God created the world, but the system is formed by us. How we spend our money. The other day, the other day, CBN came out and said they are printing new notes. You can't spend the old note. That is our system. 
But today, the old note is what we are spending again. After some people have died, some people slept in ATM machine. In fact, some people slept inside ATM machine. <laughs> Not just outside it, even inside it. Hallelujah. He said, Pastor, did you see them? <laughs> you didn't see them sitting inside the machine, but they are sitting inside the machine. <laughs> he said, the devil is the god of this age. Age is a system. That's the meaning of age. Age is a system. But God is the god of the world. Today, Russia is fighting Ukraine just for some useless, unnecessary thing. Is God responsible for that? No. Is not the devil who just decided to possess Putin 150%. Just 150%. He possessed the 150% and begin to do what he's doing. Expecting that the remaining war power will attack him so that he can kill more people. He said, that is the devil. He's the God of this system. He's the God of this system. So that's why the Bible made us to understand as believers that we're in a spiritual warfare. But he said the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. The weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal. But many Christians are not living as if they are in a warfare. Many Christians are living as if they are in a form fear. You know, there's a difference between the two of them. Warfare and form fear. That's where many of us are living. We are living as if we are in a form fear. And then once there's a delay in our health, in our finances, in our ministry, in our business, we say, God, why are you doing this to me now? God, why are you doing this to me now? That's what, that's what you say. You say, keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Devil wanted to step outside the love of God. Listen to me. For as long as you see God as part of your problem, then God can never be a part of your solution. Yes. Because if you believe I'm a witch that is trying to kill you, if you are sick in the hospital, I won't come there. I won't even call you. Because if I come to the hospital now, you say, ah, okay, the witch has come. Now, since it's like the network is bad, so I want to come and attack you physically. <laughs> I won't even send money to pay part of your hospital bill. Because you will misinterpret the money. That probably if you spend that money now, you will end up dying. Are you still there? Listen to me. For as long as you believe that God is part of your problem. And the worst part of the story is that most of us leave the devil outside the problem. Is God we face. It's God we face. That's why that's why I showed up at the beginning. God was never, thank God, Daniel did not blame God that his prayer was not answered for 21 days. He knew the person behind the answered prayer. He knew the person behind it. He knew the person behind it. So he was not troubled. You know why? Because Daniel knew that persistence will wear down resistance. Persistence will do what? Will wear down resistance. The devil never, God never asked us to fight the devil. Do you know what he asked us to do? Resist the devil. Just resist the devil. You know what? Who created you? Who created the devil? Now God knows the materials that he made you with and he knows the material that he made the devil with. He knows that it is with a time that the devil will answer. So God said resist him. Just resist the devil. Don't stop Pray. That's what Jude says. He said, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I've explained it to us. To pray in the Holy Ghost means to pray in the Word. 
To pray in the Holy Ghost means to pray in the Word. To pray in the Holy Ghost means to pray in the Word. So, I told us, never you start praying until you have found out the Word of God that promised you what you are about to look for. Hallelujah. If you are believing God for a car, as the apostles said, and the apostles were in one word, in one accord. Can you see one accord outside there? That's why I've always been driving in accord. The only time I drove outside accord was I got another scripture that says that they gave them a wagon for their journey. So I trusted God for a space wagon. And I got them. <laughs> and I got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I got it. Are you hearing me now? Yes, now listen to me. Once you have found God's word, once you have found, if you want to trust God for a land, go and read the book of Psalms. He said they did not get the land by their own arms, but because they were God's favorite. Very simple. Stay with that word. Keep praying that word. Resist the devil. Listen to me. Since God created this world, God has never needed to create more land. Have you ever heard one time they say, ah, we have run out of land, so we have to create more land so that more people can have a land to build a house. No. There is enough land For everybody on this earth to have. Are you listening to me now? But you've got to talk to the devil to remove his hand from your own land. Are you still there? Now, listen to me. When you believe that God is not part of the problem, then God is ready to be part of the solution. God is ready to be part of the solution. And it's a matter of time. The solution will surface. Because listen to me, the devil can't stand heat for too long. The devil will cover. The devil will cave in. The devil can't stand the heat for too long. <laughs> Let me tell you, you don't know the devil. Though. God said, resist him. It's just like you want to come to somebody's house. And he told the person, say, ah, that's your big dog. He said, don't worry. You know what you do when you are just coming? Just buy one piece of meat. Just drop it for the dog and walk past him. Because you know his dog. You know, you had the dog do like this. He said, bingo. He, he dropped meat. He throw his tail, go to the say, bingo. You pass him. Why? Because the owner of the dog knows the dog. He said, no, don't fail. Just drop a piece of meat and pass. And God said, resist the devil. And he will flee. Resist the devil. And he will flee. How do you resist the devil? Don't stop praying. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Once you have discovered the word. Once you have the word. Boy. Start praying. Start praying. Hallelujah. And Paul said, bearing up yourself on your most holy faith. That is, use your faith, which I've already taught off from the one that you already have the faith. You don't need, how many of you are born again here? You could never have been born again without faith. And do you know what? You don't need an extra faith outside the same one that got you saved to get God to give you finances. That's what many people don't know. Paul said, he said, the faith, he said, he said, the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You have the faith already. You have the faith already. So don't use prayer as an as an as an uh, as an emergency exit. You know, you know, in every building. There's main building, main doors that people pass through every day. But in case of emergency, there are some extra doors. 
In fact, like play. They will tell you if you pull this glass, this if you put this in this same glass that is shielding you, will open up for you to move out. So don't go and play with it when the plane is flying. They will only reach Lagos to discover that you are still in Abuja. Are you still there? Yes, sir. But most of us use prayer as an exit door. That's why prayer has never influenced our lives. Are you hearing me now? It's not a story of a. Uh, there's one powerful man of God. Let me tell you, there's no any man of God that is more powerful than the word of God. Not even devil. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with the word. Pray with the word. Every day God is confirming his word. Every day. God won't confirm you. God will confirm his word. God will confirm his word. God will confirm his word. Hallelujah. So building up yourselves, not building up your faith, but building up yourself on your most holy faith, that is, use your faith. It's not that your faith is on the ground, and then I say build up yourself on your most holy faith. Now what is just simply is that any area of your life you are building up, build it with your faith, which has been given to you already. And don't pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in. Pray in. Let prayer be your lifestyle. Let prayer be your lifestyle. Let prayer be your lifestyle. The challenge with most Christians is that we are not praying. I'm telling you, too, we are not. We are not. Look at the gospel. Look at how Christ spent a lot of time praying. If Jesus spend a lot of time praying. You who is his disciples. Why are you wasting your time? They came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray, even as John the Baptist taught his disciples. Let me tell you, until prayer becomes your habit, it will never influence your life. That's why the disciples didn't come to Jesus in Luke 11 and say, teach us how to pray. You know, most people are looking for how to do it. How? So that you can just press the button. Two times two is cause of four. Four times four is 16. No. You can, you can read how to fly a plane. But nobody will call you a captain until you have flown a certain number of hours. In the hospital, you will never become a consultant until you have put in several hours to work. Are you listening to me now? Prayer will never influence your life if it does not happen on a daily basis. Do you know, do you know people who, who know about who know about church history told us and said that Paul's kneecaps, that Paul's kneecaps are as hard as the, as the kneecap of camel. People who read church history told us that Paul's kneecap is as hard. And it's very true. You go and read all his epistles. You will always see prayer. Paul, Paul talk about how he prayed for you often. In fact, what he's praying about, all his disciples, sorry, all his sons in the ministry. When he write Philemon, he told him what he prays for. You now ask yourself a question. Where, what time do Paul have to have studied the scriptures? Yet, he was studying the scripture. I'm telling you. If I forgot to get Paul to write the two thought of, of the New Testament, God has to make sure that they put Paul in prison. So he sent for the parchment so he can be able to write. Do you know that there's, there's, there's a story that Paul was actually married? That Paul was actually married. But you see, such a man couldn't cope up with marriage. No, no, no. The same with Moses. Because they put hours to work for God. 
to work for God. Hallelujah. But you see, one thing nobody will do for you, which you just need to get straight and right today. Listen to me. Nobody is going to do your praying for you. Nobody is going to do your praying for you. And do you know what? You don't have to go to any mountain or anywhere. You know, when I use the language mountain, because some people believe that there's one Baba somewhere. Like they say in those states, there's one Baba on one mountain somewhere. The Baba can't the Baba can do it for you. If you get there, the Baba will subject you to days of prayer. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> Pastor Pat has been there. I was just joking. Are you listening? Even when you get it, the man will subject you to pray. <laughs> he will subject you to pray. Because he knows that nobody can do your praying for you. You have to do it. God doesn't have grandchildren. No, God doesn't have grandchildren. God has children. Some people thought that he had a boy is God's son. We are God's grandson. No, God doesn't have grandson. God has children. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must do the praying yourself. You must do it. You must do it. All I'm just doing is to just, is just to encourage you and to let you see the reason why you must. Why you must. Until you make up your mind to do it. Success in life will still be like a mirage. You almost get there, you won't get it. Because even when God asks the devil, he said, now, nah, our body say fine. He said, where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro. Devil is busy. From to and fro. Devil is busy. He said, from to and fro. He said, no time to rest. No time to rest. From to and fro. Hallelujah. So if the devil is busy, you who is his victim? You want to sleep? <laughs> Have you seen where antelope decide to go and have a snap? When he knows that lions are around, if lions keep awake, he might go keep awake. <laughs> or else he will end up on lion's menu. You won't end up on devil's menu. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. But you see, you must be up. The Bible says, we rezu. We rezu. But it said, not against flesh and blood. We rezu. I've heard people who came to tell me and say, Reverend, I said, what's the problem? They said, they told me that the devil is attacking me. I told the person, I said, who told you that? He said, that's what they told me where I went to pray. I said, they are telling you for too late. I said, you didn't know that the devil has been attacking you for long. So I said, it is not a prophecy. It is what the devil has been doing. He said, but I don't know what I did for the devil. I said, nobody did anything for the devil. The devil just wants to feast on everybody. <laughs> when lion attacks antelope, it's not that because antelope did anything to the corpse. No. Lion just wants to grow fat. Even if it means that you're dying. Hallelujah. So please, don't think that it is time to sleep. No. Even God said, he said, pray and watch. Hallelujah. Be ready to pray. Be ready to pray. But like I already said, Smithugus was said, there's almost little or nothing to pray about. He said, look, Anything you have wanted, Christ has made it available. That is practically correct. 
That's practically correct. So that's why you search the scriptures to know what God has promised you in his word. Listen to me. Until you know what God has promised you in his word, don't pray. Even though the devil will wear you away along the line. Are you listening to me now? You know there are many people who are waiting for people like us to give up in ministry. But you say, but it's a mistake because before we started the ministry, we already know the end before we started it. So they will only meet us at the end when the work is finished. Because we know, we know, we know whom we have believed. <laughs> we know whom we have believed. We know. So always find out what God's word said. Once you know what God's word said, like 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 Black Bartimaeus began to cry in prayer. Yes, sir. Began to cry in prayer. Now that is kind of prayer that you don't need to wait for somebody to come and tell you go and pray. No. No. <laughs> no. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was praying. And his, his, his sweat was like a thick blood. Not that he was sweating blood, though, but his sweat was like a thick blood. Jesus, huh? <laughs> who would talk to blind eyes to open at the open? He prayed. His sweat was coming out like a thick blood. When you are praying, you are finding yourself. Le boboko saraba ya. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know what somebody said? He said you are praying, you are finding yourself, ba. He said the devil that will attack you is still doing press up. <laughs> he said, but time is true with his press up. <laughs> you understand that it is not praying and finding yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said the devil is still doing press up. You know when somebody is doing press up to build his muscle before he comes to fight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let's get serious. Right from the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. Take it by force. Take it by force. Take it by force. Hallelujah. He said, keep yourself in the love of God. Now, see some of the things that want to take you out of the love of God. Let me show it to you before we read our text from that look. We have not even read our text. Though. Romans 8 at 8 at 9. Romans 8, 38, 39. Hallelujah. Hear what he said. Romans 8, 38, 39. Are you there? He said, for I am persuaded. <laughs> now that's what we're talking about. For I am what? Persuaded. The challenge that most of us are not persuaded yet. We're in between the two. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Are you hearing me now? Neither death nor life. I'm persuaded. Do you know why some people die early? It's because they are afraid of death. If you want to live longer, Never be afraid of death. That's what Paul said. Paul said, listen, if I die, I gain. If I live, I preach the gospel. He said, whichever side of the coin, he said, I'm a winner. So how does they want to kill such a man? <laughs> That's why by the time Paul was writing to Philemon, he said, Philemon, he said, Paul, the aged. So, me that Paul did not die premature death. He died the age. That was a man that when he wanted to warm himself, 
a snake. Fasting is high. Fasting is said on Paul's hand and beat Paul. Paul shook it into the fire and continued warming himself. The people were watching whether Paul would die or not. <laughs> After the time when Paul knew that, they say, you must be a god. People who actually die fast are people who are afraid of death. Paul said, neither death nor life no angels. No angels. That's our two people. All of you attending church of angels, you are in trouble. No, that's what Paul said. Listen to me. There is no one single angel of God that will want you to name a church after him. Because you see, the Bible says we are going to judge angels. Have you ever gone to the city and you see them naming any of the city after any man's servant or houseboy? No. So how can you name a church after an angel who's supposed to be a servant of the church? So that shows you who's the angel, who the angel is. And do you know what? Till tomorrow, the devil still wants to take God's glory. So be careful. There's no church that will enter to where they name it, either Celestine Church or whatever. I want, want, the moment you are put Celestine, I'm, I'm not entering. He said, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, no powers, no things present. Things present. Some people, because they lost what they have today, they gave up on God. They started insulting God. No things present, no things to come. Listen to me now. Even if you are believing God for it and it did not come, it should never stop you for being your best for God. That's what they say. Things present, if what you have now, you have to lose it. Will that change your love for God? If what you are trusting God for to come did not come, after some time, will you give up on God? That's what Paul is saying. He said, or hide or depth. Whether you are promoted though, or you are demoted though, will you change your love for God? He said, no, any other creature. No, any other creature, nothing. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So that's why I say, keep yourself in the love of God. Are you still there? Do what? Keep yourselves in the love of God. Let me tell you, no angel. Now, when you use the word angel, what it means is that, just like I said, many people are given special name to their church so that they can get your attention. Are you listening to me now? Now, those names are just the bait. When you get there, they will give you the rating. In fact, they are actually getting even more bold today. Some are even using the name Church of Satan now. And they have more crowd than Church of Christ. Because the, 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 the idea behind it is this. They say, you know that your problem is devil. He said, yeah. He said, do you know what? Let's go go into his camp. But do you know that's practically true? Let me give you a testimony. A man came for a deliverance when Ibenemer was alive. So they were trying to deliver the man. They did everything, no, nothing happens. They did everything, nothing happens. God now told one sister, God said, do you know what that chain on his neck? 
pull it out. Ha! So I will say chain. What does chain got to do with deliverance? God said, pull it out. So the sister went there and held the chain and pulled it out of his neck. The guy scream and scream and roll on the ground. God said they should open it, they should open that chain up. So when they opened it up, inside the chain, they saw an inscription. This life is sealed for Satan. Touch it not. Yes. This life is sealed for Satan. Touch him not. After some time, the brother came back to life. Everything was normal. Then I said, let's discuss this chain. He now told him that actually, when his parents gave back to him, he was always falling sick. So they now took him to somewhere in Ghana. And then I said, there's no problem that they will appease the devil. So they signed a covenant and that agreement was reached that this life is sealed for Satan, touch it not. So he has to carry, you know, God says you should carry your cross. So the devil also told him to carry his own cross too. You know, everything God does, the devil has fake. That's why the fact that they are clapping in the church where you went to and they are drinking, you know, does not mean that it's of God. If God opens your eyes, you see the communion, you discover that it is blood of woman being you are drinking. <laughs> are you still there? So he says, since the day they put that chain on his neck, he has never fallen sick. That even when he's baiting, the chain is on his neck. That the day he removes it, that day he will lose his life. So when they put that chain out, the devil wanted to kill him, but said, they, they told the devil, say, no, you can't kill him. Say you can't kill him. You can't kill him. So you see, people go to that extent because they don't want to die. So they give their souls to the devil. So you see, sickness, or sorry, life has separated them from the love of God. Life has separated them. The same thing with some people. Because, because they believe that poverty has dealt with them too much. There are people who believe that poverty has been duplex in their life. Are you still there? And because they are tired of poverty, they are ready to follow anybody to anywhere to get anything as long as you to give them money. Do you know what? Life has separated them from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many people at, the, at, their, at, their, at their deathbed. They bring them a herbalist and they will tell them that they can reverse the sickness. They can reverse the sickness. Like somebody came from America one time and came to a church and then after they prayed for him, he was healed. Then the pressman asked him a question. They say, but people in this country believe that this man is of Satan. He said, but now the man has healed you. What do you say? He said, whether the man is of Satan or is not of Satan, as far as he is concerned, he was sick and is in. I say he believes in him. Did you get that? So death can separate people from the love of God. Paul told the king, he said, King, he said, I'm not afraid to die. He said, if I have committed anything that's supposed to kill me, to die for, he said, I'm ready to die for it. Remember Mesha, Shadrach, and Abednego? I think there are four of them, huh? And Daniel. Am I correct? The four Hebrew children. Abi? Good. They asked them to bow down. They asked them to bow down. And if they refuse to bow down, they will hit the fire seven times. They told the king, they said, King, concerning this matter, we are not careful to answer you. If you like, increase this one 
thousand times, we will still not bow. Listen to me. The fire was so bad. Have you read your Bible? That the Bible said that the people who were carrying them, you know, they tied their hands and their legs. The people who were carrying them to the fire, they were killed by the flame or the fire itself. Am I correct? Yes. Talk to me now. Yes, now, let me ask you a question. How did they get into the fire? Hmm? What it means is this. The, the flame even burned the, 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 the something, what do you call? The rope that, that uh, what do you call? That they were tied with. And because Jesus Christ was waiting inside the fire, so they just entered there and just have fellowship with him. <laughs> they just entered the fire and continued the service. <laughs> and the king said, was it not four people with tie put inside fire? He said three people with tie put inside fire. He said, but now I can say four of them. <laughs> he said, in fact, the fourth one looked like the sons of God. Are you listening to me now? The fastest way you can die is to be afraid of death. It's the fastest way to die. It's the fastest way to die. It's the fastest way to die. But you see, Pastor Aldo has preached it. He's coming back again. He said, everything is what? Everything is what? Everything is yours, including death. The Bible said, including death is yours. He said, death is a driver that was supposed to drive you to eternity. So your driver doesn't tell you what time to go home. You tell your driver, say, we are going home. And I, just give me another two hours. I have some other things to do. You cannot say, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, enter motor, let's go. Even death is yours. All things are yours. Whether it is Paulo or Apollo Zo, even death is yours. That is, death is under your control. That's what the Bible says. It is appointed unto every man who wants to die. Death doesn't just come suddenly. It comes with appointment. Hallelujah. So don't allow death or life to separate you from the love of God. Not even poverty. Hallelujah. Today, I've seen people, one time one of my friends, Said a pastor came and met him and said, Man of God, come. What is the secret of your riches in ministry? He said, You're so successful. He said, What is your secret? He said, Man of God, very simple. He said, My secret is faith. He said, Man of God, don't deceive me. All of us have faith. What is your secret? In other words, he is telling him that he believes that there's another power somewhere that he uses. And he's ready to have it if he's ready to give it to him. No, that's the meaning. Why? Because this faith is not producing enough result. I won't mention the church. I was reliably told that a very big church in this country were having minister's conference. Some of you who know this story will know what I'm talking about. That suddenly the man of God, one of the top leading ministers in this country, suddenly the man of God said they should shut down all the doors. They shut down all the doors. He removed his clothes down to pant. Yes. People thought that he was mad. He said, all of you, remove your clothes. So when people started removing their clothes, Desire seeing people with layard. <laughs> we took people with uh, charm. Hamlet. Yes. In this country, not, not in uh, South Africa, in this nation. He now asked them, he said, I am the geo of this ministry. He said, This is how I am. He said, why are people doing this? They say, eh, you know, because of the pressure that we're supposed to have a certain number of people that will come to church. 
You know, you know, most of these ministries give their branch churches the financial turnover. Their pastors are under pressure. They take the count of head people, they, they, they count the head of people that come to church every Sunday. If your number is dropping or you are not meeting up, they will remove you and put another person. Hmm? You know about that? Yes. Good. So when your income is coming, they say, last month your money was 1.3 million. This month, what is happening? 800,000. He said, you are beginning to backslide. Though. So even if you are a hawker and you bring good offering to the church, you are pastor's best friend. At least you are helping him to keep his job. So the, most of the pastors say, sir, we have to help ourselves to meet off. <laughs> So, if you are now using the devil <laughs> to succeed against the devil, <laughs> their brother, <laughs> he get as he be. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Listen to me. Don't allow life to separate you from the love of God. Paul said, either height or depth. That is, you've gone very high in life. Something happened and you have to come down. He said, don't allow it to separate you from the love of God. You see, ah, how, can people, how can people know that me, who, is, who used to be a very dynamic Christian, who is very rich, today I don't have any cars. These are that and stuff. So somebody say, hey, you know, let me take you to where they will do special prayer for you. My friend, that same God has been protecting you before today. The fact that you lost your two cars and now you have to climb machine does not mean that the God has failed. You have to go extra mile to get it back. No. Do you know what? It has separated you from the love of God. It has separated you from the love of God. That's what Paul said. Paul said, keep, sorry, Jude said, keep yourself. Number one, he said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Get the scripture. Stay in prayer. Do you know what? Say, keep yourself in the love of God. I know the pressure is much. Hallelujah. The pressure is much. Every day I have colleagues who are telling me how much they bought their car. 21 million. I saw a pastor this morning when I was jogging. He was driving another car. This year alone, I've seen it with three different cars. Whether he's borrowing from church members or whether they are his own, but I've seen it in three different cars. Are you listening to me now? But that will never make me to go to him and say, man of God, what is the secret? <laughs> Praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray the scriptures. I'm going to pray the scriptures. And do you know what? I will keep myself in the love of God. I will never allow anything to separate me from it. I will never allow him anything to separate me from the love of God. And the interesting thing is this. Hallelujah. The Bible said, for we have not a high priest. Let's look at it. Hebrews 4, 16. Hebrews 4 from 14. Hallelujah. Keep yourself in the love of God. Don't allow death to separate you from the love of God. Today, some people lost their husband. And the story is that it was an attack. So the next thing you are hearing is that they want to protect the family from attack because it is, it, is, it is the enemy of the family that killed the man. So how are you going to protect them? You want to go to a village. Because they told you that you better come back to a village 
that all those people in your church, we know most of them, who come here to collect power. You, you say, it's God you are serving. You too, you now say, okay, it's true. You now go back to the village to go and collect the power. Do you know what? Death have separated you from the love of God. I've shared the story here before I do, or I don't know. There was a time I was passing out blood as physics. I was passing out blood as physics. And the devil told me, he said, David, he said, you will die. Yes, that's what the devil told me. Do you know what I tell the devil? I asked him a question. I said, thank you, devil. I said, if I die, where do I go? He said, you will die and go to heaven. I said, if I die and go to heaven, I said, I have not lost. I said, you, you lost. Do you know what? I was healed. <laughs> I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. Keep yourself in the love of God. Now, I started today by telling you that there's virtually little or nothing to pray about. Yet, Smithy's God will hardly go beyond 30 minutes without praying. Hebrews 4.14 said, Are you there? Seeing there that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Let me start again, 4.14. Seeing then that we, we do what? We have. He didn't say sin then that we had. He didn't say sin then that we will have. Sin then that what? Sin then that we have. What is have? Past tense? Future tense? What is have? Present continuous tense. Meaning that as we are talking right now, are you listening to me now? Jesus Christ is not in heaven saying, well, I finished their salvation work. Let me just watch what Chelsea and Manu is going to play this afternoon. No. Listen to me. As of today, Christ has a present day ministry that is still going on. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us do what? Who first our profession? Profession means confession. Listen to me. That is your ticket to live. That is your ticket to your car. That is your ticket to the success in your marriage. That is the ticket to your health. Don't change your confession. That's your ticket to your prosperity. Don't change it. No matter the pressure. I know whom I have believed. I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That even though he was rich, but for my sake, he became poor. So that me through his poverty might be rich. Hold fast your what? Your confession. By stripes, I am healed. By stripes, I am healed. But say it's a terminal case. That's what they said. <laughs> but as far as you are concerned, by stripes, you are here. Hold fast. That is all he's requesting from you. Hear what he said. For we have not. He's saying it the second time. Ladies and gentlemen. Are you hearing it for the second time again? For we have not an high priest. Which cannot be touched. With the feeling of our infirmities. Listen to me. I am Dickness Grace's pastor. I don't know if she had breakfast before she left the house this morning. And her stomach is doing mm, brrr, brrr. hunger. Are you listening to me now? The way she is feeling the hunger, I'm not feeling it. Even though I'm a pastor. But do you know what? Jesus is different. When your stomach is doing brrr, brrr, because you have not eaten, Jesus also only is doing brrr, brrr, because you have not eaten. That's what the Bible says. For we have not a high priest that is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities. 
You feel headache? Jesus felt it. There's a pain in your waist, ba? Jesus is also feeling pain, waist. He's feeling it. He's feeling it. That's what the Bible said. For we don't have a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. You know where a high priest is? A high priest is a man who goes from man to God. A prophet is a man who goes from God to man. A prophet that comes and says, Give, this is what God is telling me to tell you. So he goes from God to man. A prophet cannot go back to God and say, God, this is what gift say I should tell you. Are you listening to me now? It is a priest who goes from man to God. Are you listening to me now? And you see, the worldly priest, they don't know how you feel. They don't know how you feel. A woman lost her husband some years ago. When she was crying, I went there and said, hey, my sister, I know the way you feel. She looked at me and said, you, you, you are lying. You don't know the way I feel. I said, yes, you are correct. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I have not lost my wife. Neither has my wife lost me. So none of us know the way people who lost their spouse, how they feel. We can only sympathize with them. But brother... You don't know the way they feel. You don't know. But guess what? Jesus knows exactly the way they are feeling. He knows. Now, the man who knows that, are you still there? The man who knows that, do you know what he told you? He said, just hold on your confession. It's like, it's like you are in 14-story building that is burning down, and then you are holding to one cable, and somebody said, you know, madam, just hold on, just hold on, I'm coming, just hold on, I'm coming, and he went, and he said he's coming, because he said, just hold on, I'm coming, you hold on, because you believe that he must know what he wants to do. Now that's what God said, God said, hold on to your confession. He said, because you don't have a hybrid that does not know the way you are feeling. So if the high priest who knows exactly the way you are feeling told you to hold on to your confession, you don't need more. You don't need more. You don't need more. Are you listening to me? When you stand by the roadside and you see post cars driving to work every day and during the rainy season, some of them even drove, they will splash water on your body. You say, ah! You say, Kai, He said, God, God, when will you take this reproach from my life? When will I also own God, own my own car? No. Don't speak like that to God. It's not the one that delayed your car. There's a delay of your car by the devil somehow. Don't allow what just happened now to keep you away from the love of God. Don't ever talk to God as, he, as if he's part of that problem. Are you listening to me now? See the devil as part of that problem and see God as part of the solution. And do you know all he asks you to do? He said, hold on to your confession. Hold on to your confession. Hallelujah. Hold on to your confession. Let's continue. He said, he said, Hold, hold fast to your God, for we have not an high priest which cannot be taught with the feelings of infirmity, but was in all point tempted like as we are. Like as we are. Like as we are. Like as we are. So listen to me. He knows exactly how painful it is to experience that. He knows exactly. But here what God said, he said, yet without sin. Yet without sin. That's why we miss it. The moment you start complaining and talking to God as if God is part of that problem, you have sinned. You have sinned. Listen to me. Somebody went to meet God one day because he lost his son, the only son he has. 
He went to God and said, God, where were you when my son died? Do you know what God replied him? Do you know what God replied him? God said, the same place where I was when my own two died. He said, I have not changed the position. <laughs> he said, I have not changed the position. He said, the same place where I was when my own two died for you is the same place where I, he said, I have not changed my position. Hallelujah. In other words, listen to me. God is much in this thing as much as we are. We can't afford to have a divided home. Why most of us are not getting breakthrough now is because our confession is already negative. We see God as part of our problem. Listen to me. As long as you see God as so part of your problem, he can never be part of your solution. And do you know what? That will keep you permanently in the problem. That will keep you permanently in the problem. Okay. Now look at the next verse, which is where the message is. Let us therefore do what? Come boldly. Not come timidly. Not come shamefully. No. He said, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. So that what may happen? That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hey, listen to me now. That is what Smithugu's word pray for every time. The Lord's mercy. Mr. Honey, do you understand that? Listen to me. Concerning your finances, God has settled it. Concerning your hair, God has finished it. We waste too much time telling God the way we, what we are going through. God said, before you ever had it, I knew it and I've already provided a solution. So at the end of our long prayer, we ended up saying nothing. We ended up saying nothing. So that is why Jude said, let's go back to that Jude, Luke 1, 2021 again. Jude said, keep yourselves in the love of God, doing what? Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So if there's anything you should be looking for in prayer, it's not car. It's not even money. It's not even health. It's not even breakthrough. I listen to me now. All those things have been accomplished. Do you know what you should be asking for God in prayer? It's mercy. It's mercy. It's mercy. It's mercy. So that all those things that the devil is delaying can be released. You begin to ask for his mercy. You begin to ask for his mercy. So most of us waste our time asking for what we are not supposed to be asking for. At the end of the day, we don't ask for mercy. So that kept us in the same spot. Because listen to me. If you need one million naira, and I've already sent you the one million naira, are you listening to me now? And the alert has come, and you keep talking to me about one million naira, I will not listen to you. Because you can't pray in the Holy Ghost without praying in the Word. I listen to me now. So if you know what the word says and you pray the word, I listen to me now. It's now you consented to it that you have received the alert. Are you listening to me now? But if there's no manifestation in the physical year, what do you do? Begin to ask for his mercy. The Bible says it is by the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. So you didn't he say, keep yourself in the love of God, 
Look for the mercy. He said, he said, look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What did he say? Did he say, look for the mercy? What did he say? Is that what he said? No. He said, look in. Look in. That is present continuous tense. He didn't say, look for the mercy of God. He said, look in. Are you listening? Look in for the mercy of God. So if there's anything you should spend time praying is for his mercy. Not mercy for sin, no. Are you listening to me now? Listen to me. Have you noticed that there are people who have not prayed as much as you prayed? They've had a breakthrough? Yes, sir. Have you noticed that there are people who have not even evangelized as much as you have evangelized? They have crowd. So when you have done what they have done and you have not seen results, what do you do? You ask for his mercy. Look at Romans. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, mercy and grace are the same thing. I will explain it to you. Don't get it wrong. What is grace? Very simple. Grace gives you what you do not deserve. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, no matter how much you try, your righteousness will never take you to heaven. By grace, are you saved? Lest any man should do what? Should boast. What it is? It is the gift of God. So the reason why we're going to be in heaven is by his grace. It has nothing with what you did or what you didn't do. No. And that is grace. So grace gives you what you do not deserve. That's why some people call it unmerited favor. That's what grace is all about. But do you know what mercy is? Mercy do not give you what you deserve. What is grace? God gives you what you do not deserve. Somebody said, I've come to, I came to this Abuja before Paul. What is Paul doing? Paul is just sewing clothes. But do you know today, Paul is driving a car? Now, when you cannot find out how it happened, what made it happen is grace. He just ran into somebody who just said he liked the way he's so clothed and the man just enjoy it and then every time he comes to the man's house he brings clothes, clothes that he has sewn and one day the man said, boy, I just like you. You know what? Take that car. It happens every day. People give people car free every day. Are you listening to me now? But you are a graduate up to now you don't have car. He's just sewing clothes. It is grace who that made that available for him. If it is by rank, he does not deserve to start driving a car. Did you get that now? Now, mercy is like that. Mercy do not give you what you deserve. I listen to me now. Somebody say, I know that lady. Throughout the time we were in university, she was constantly aborting. If she has not aborted, she has probably aborted more than 50 times. Are you listening to me now? Everybody knows her on campus. But guess what? Before everybody got married, she's married. Even the spirits, the, the, the beautiful ones on campus, they're still looking for a husband. I know virgins who married, and to today, they are still looking for babies. But she was a wayward girl, has aborted severally, but today, she has grandchildren. 
Are you listening to me now? To you, she, she does not deserve to be married, not to talk of having children, because she has killed many children. But do you know what Mercy did? Mercy did not give her what she deserved. <laughs> that is Mercy. Mercy did not give her what she deserved. Mercy did not give her what she deserved. And then there are people who believe that they deserve to have the best man, the best house, the best car, because they say, I kept myself for God. I never slept around. I'm not saying sleeping around is good, though. Don't get me wrong. I'm actually telling you that that is where the problem is coming from. You don't believe me? Look at it here. Let's look at it in that parable. We'll come back to that place. You know, most of the time we read, uh, let's look Luke 18. Most of the time we read Luke 18. We read it from verse 9. Abi? Okay, let's go to Luke 18, verse 9. Are you there? So this one, something, something God shared with me. God said, David, he said, my people are still asking me to give them what I've already done. But do you know what? You don't have enough of God's mercy. That is what you should spend your time in prayer, talking to God about. That's what Luke did to us. He said, look in for the mercy of God unto salvation, I mean, unto eternal life. Hey, Father, I need this. Father, I need that. In fact, some of us ignorantly report our Christian brother to God. And we use them, and we use them to tell God that we deserve a better life than they do. Are you, are, you, are you in verse 9? You know, mostly we read from verse 9. Verse 9 says, um, are you in verse 9? Look at what verse 9 says. It says, and, and he spake these parables unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Like somebody said, don't look down on anybody except you are admiring their shoe. Okay. And despite others, two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. Extensioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off will not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven. But smote upon his breast, saying, What did he say in prayer? God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went home to his house, justified rather, than the order for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Now, mostly we read it from that verse. Are you still there? Now, you can see the difference between mercy. You can see what mercy is. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Who? A sinner. A sinner. A sinner. He didn't say, God, have grace on me. A sinner. No, have mercy. In other words, I know what I deserve, but don't give me what I deserve. That is mercy. Mercy say, I know ordinarily I shouldn't own this. But Lord, allow your mercy to prevail. Are you listening to me now? Yes, that is mercy. You can see it in this story. But you see, this parable is not the beginning of the message. Because you look at that verse now, you say, and he spake a parable. Before this and, he spoke one parable before then. So let's go to verse 1 and read it. What is in verse 1 of Luke 18? One? And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faith. 
Did you see that? Now that is what the two parables are all about. So meaning that you are supposed to pray and not to faint. Are you listening to me now? Now when you have discovered what God's word says about your case, are you listening to me now? Don't talk to God again to do it because he has already done it. What do you do? Ask for his mercy. So most of the time we pray and repeat what God has done and ask God to do what he has done and at the end of the whole, we never ask God for his mercy. So God was left with, not, God was left with nothing to do for us. Because what you are talking to him about, he has already done it. The money, he has already made it available. The husband, there are, there, are, there are more men on this earth than you can marry. But if you are not married yet, then ask him for his mercy. Ask him for his mercy. Are you listening to me now? If you are not having what the world says you have already had, what do you do? Ask him and say, God, have mercy. This position I am now is not the position I am supposed to be. Even your word said it. But Lord, can you have mercy? Are you listening to me now? Now, if you read that parable because of time, which we have read before, you will discover that it was a, a woman who went to an unjust judge consistently. And the judge will not listen to her because the judge does not fear God. Are you listening to me now? And we said that that is not talking about God, though. that's talking about devil. Now, meaning that one of the things that can be an hindrance to your prayer is who? Talk to me now. Unjust judge, which is the devil. Are you listening to me now? Then the second one is you. That's what that parable is all about. Because you waste your time talking to God about what he said he has done. Instead of you to ask him. When, because he has already done it, and the devil is doing this to you, he said, God, have mercy. So that's why Jude says, he said, looking unto Jesus. So he, said, so he said, looking for the mercy, looking for it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. That's why as Christians we must walk in the consciousness of God's mercy. Oh, Auntie Pat, how is it today? We, give, we thank God for his mercy. Do you know what to do? You just acknowledge it, that where you are now, it is his mercy. So that was why when these two people went to the temple, the other one was praying with himself, was telling God what he is doing, how he is struggling spiritually with fasting, how he's, he's, uh, he's tithing, how he's not committing adultery, how he's not committing this and committing that. The other one knows, say, look, <laughs> it's not by might and by power. Are you listening to me now? There are people who are doing worse than what this man is doing, and yet they are driving brown new cars every day. Are you still there? Yes, sir. So in that case, what do you ask God for? Mercy. Mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. Are you still there? God have mercy. We waste our time in prayer trying to talk God to do what he has already done. Listen to me. If the world says God has already done it and you are not seeing what God has already done, what do you go to prayer to ask for? Mercy. Of course, mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on your servant. God, have mercy on your church. God, have mercy on your people. God, have mercy. Are you listening to me now? And that's why Hebrews 4.16 now saying, let us come with boldness to the throne of grace that we may do what? Obtain. So that we can obtain. So ladies and gentlemen, now that you are going to pray, that you are not going to spend more than 10 after every 30 minutes, you are in consciousness of prayer. Don't talk to God again about the car. Don't talk to God again about the bill. Are you listening to me now? Ask God for his mercy. God have mercy. God have mercy. God ask mercy. Listen to me. You cannot over ask for his mercy. What people like David enjoy was the mercy of God. I told people, if I'm to choose a king between David 
and Saul. I will choose Saul. Are you listening to me now? I don't want a man who will put me in the war front and ask them to withdraw the reinforcement I have so that I can die, he can take over my wife. Are you listening to me now? But God said, David will never lack a man to sit on the throne. And God said, and the sure mercy of David. Now, meaning that David was an David was, was, was God's mercy personified. What was Saul's problem? God said, go and destroy the Amalite, Amalekites. He destroyed them. He kept the fattest cows to offer sacrifice to God. And God said, because you disobey me, you will not take the throne to the next generation. David committed adultery. David committed murder. And God said, David will not like a man to sit on the throne forever. Ah uh-uh. ah. Ah uh-uh. ah. The same God. My brother, I need his mercy. <laughs> Are you listening to me now? Yes, sir. Don't prove anything to God. Don't even use your brother to go and pray to God. Some said, ha, hmm, now wow. If you listen to that man, even his grammar is terrible, yet crap. He said, God, see the way I speak phonetics. Don't you think I deserve more people than he deserve? Yes. But do you know what? Mercy is working for him. Mercy is not working for you. Are you still there? Yes, sir. So the reason why many people are not getting answered to prayers is not because they are not doing everything right. They are asking for everything they can ask as the word has said. But do you know what? They are not asking God for his mercy. So that's what Mikutuzo said. There's almost little or nothing to pray about. They say everything you want to pray about, the word of God has already said it. Yet the man cannot go beyond 30 minutes without praying. What does he pray for? Mercy. He was a plumber. Who would not write his own name? It was his wife who taught him how to read and write. Are you listening to me now? Most of the time, he will enter Abuja, for example, with that announcement. He will just come and pray, come and preach in one small church somewhere. But before he will leave Abuja, the whole of Abuja radio and TV will carry. They will, see, television come to his meeting free of charge. Listen to me. That is a man who has found mercy with God. But there are ministers who can speak grammar. Who can do Bible exposition? But do you know what? They never ask God for mercy in their ministry. But Miku to us know that he's not qualified. I'm not educated. I'm just a bloody plumber. Who can speak English? Somebody said, I like going to Miku's words, me to know. But he said, but when you are going, he said, enjoy his meeting, but dodge his grammar. <laughs> he said, but when it comes to power, you will see raw power. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a man who asks God for mercy every day. I listen to Andrew Womack speak every day. He said it on TV. He said, listen, one day he asked God, he said, God, why did you choose to use all like me? He said, I'm of all people least qualified. No formal education. Hmm? He's shy. He can't even talk to people. But he has raised, he can't, in fact, he can't count the number of people that he has raised back to life. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. So Jude said, looking for the mercy of God. Ladies and gentlemen, everything you had wanted on this earth, God's word has provided them. 
Are you listening to me now? It's not your prayer. Taye? It's Taeba. Good one. It's not your prayer that will make God to create it. God has already settled it before you even go to prayer. But do you know what? In your prayer, ask him for mercy. Say, Lord, Lord, it is true that people are not qualified as much as I am. I know what they achieved. I know, what, I know where they are sleeping today. I know what they are eating today. But Lord, can you have mercy? 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 Listen to me. When you understand that, and God begins to lift you up in life, you will not say somebody is envying you. Because do you know what? If mercy takes you there, it will take mercy to keep you there. So when I see somebody say people are envying them, I know it is not mercy that took them there. They took themselves there. <laughs> and do you know what? They are doing everything they can on their own to keep themselves there. Mike, not the arm. You look beyond me. 